Hi, this is Dave, KE0OG, with a KE0OG Quickie. We're going to unbox two digital mobile radios, or DMR radios. One of them is from Radiotity, and the other from Baofeng. Hi, this is Dave Kassler, KE0OG, with a KE0OG Quickie. Radiotity wanted me to look at their DMR radios. And I said, well, you better send me two of them because uh, I don't have anything to test with and there are no DMR repeaters on the Western Slope here in Colorado. DMR stands for Digital Mobile Radio. Uh, this particular one has a GPS also. So they sent me two radios. They're branded radio, which they've been working on for a while and are very proud of, the Radiotity GD55. And when they say they developed it, I think they worked with one of the major manufacturers to kind of uh, make it the way they want it. So they also sent with this, so that I could evaluate it, a Baofeng DM5R, which is a fairly popular DMR radio, digital mobile radio. Now there's three kinds of digital running around these days. There's uh, D-Star, System Fusion, and this uh, DMR, uh, which is a little bit of a latecomer. Now the thing that's interesting about the, uh, the GD55, the Radiotity, is that it's designed uh, for some environmental uh, uh, circumstances, such as in water. It can be in a meter of water for 30 minutes. Uh, it uh, can withstand drops and falls. It claims from a four-story building, but I suspect that's into a newly plowed field. I, I don't know how well that would work. Um, and so there's lots of things in here. Now each of these radios is also a full-blown ordinary analog radio and we'll test all that in a future video. Uh, this one also has GPS and we'll test all that. We'll make sure it works. The first thing we want to look at is the unboxing of the uh, Radiotity GD55. It says the best waterproof DMR radio. Okay, good advertising. Uh, here we have uh, the manual. The manual is entirely in English. Uh, so there's enough instructions here. And they have, uh, I think, worked a little harder uh, to put use cases in here. So if you're trying to do a particular thing, um, you know, numerical keying or uh, radio check or something like that. Uh, they've got the specific things to do there, plus all the usual menu features. Uh, nice colors. Uh, because it is an environmentally protected radio, uh, they have some instructions here that talk about it. It's an uh, IP67 radio and uh, IP67 and that tells you uh, what it is. It's dust tight and it's immersion up to one meter of water test duration uh, 30 minutes right there okay and then there's separate uh, instructions for using the GPS now one of the nice things about the DMR radios being digital uh, they're a lot more power efficient than uh, ordinary analog radios however the GPS has to be on all the time so when you're using the GPS you've got to be prepared for faster battery usage now, the way this is packaged in here is a bit reminiscent of the Baofeng. Um, I don't know what manufacturer they worked with. So we've got a radio here that's branded uh, with the uh, Radiotides uh, branding there. They're making the uh, D red now. And uh, some interesting different types of keys on the thing that are used for the DMR functions. And it's got a place for a battery in here and it says that this is um, waterproof and one of the things that it warns you is that if you try to disassemble this or play with it you'll probably mess up with the waterproofness. Okay and it's got an air pressure adjusting tool do not tamper with or cover. Okay very very good we won't. Alright let's take out the, the plastic insert and see what we find inside. Here we have uh, the battery, all right, and it's got three contacts there, uh, but only two down here, so we'll have to see how that works. That looks like it goes on the radio, uh, sort of like that. And we pull this down here. We may have to work on the radio. 
Okay, there it is. It's on. Okay, and you snap this thing that says open. You pull that, and it allows the thing to come up. Now, the reason for the push down is because to make these plastic pieces line up and create the waterproof uh, housing that you're looking for. Okay, well, a lot of space in there to put your owner name. <laughs> About the size of my thumb. All right, now what else do we have here? Here is an antenna, a uh, little dinky thing, and it says at the bottom there what it's for, UHF 400 to 480 megahertz. So it's claiming this is a UHF antenna. All right, here is the power uh, source. Note that this is uh, input, output, 12.5 volts DC. Here is the uh, belt clip. Here's a long antenna. This is like the uh, TYT that I reviewed before. It's quite long. Okay. And let's see what it says down under here for the thing. Okay, 400 to 480 megahertz, 400 to 480 megahertz. So this is looking an awful lot like a single band radio. A lot of the DMR is done on uh, 440 megahertz. And then this is the thing you set the uh, entire unit in to charge it. And it says uh, blinking red if it's charging, green if it's completed. Uh, the input is 12.5 volt DC. That's close enough to uh, a car input or a battery input. It's a, a little low for 13.8 volt. Of course, they supply the power plug, so that's okay. And is there anything else? No, that's it. Now, what I'm going to do is show you the other radio since they sent me this uh, so that I could test the interoperability. First, they sent me a uh, programming cable, and I'm looking at this thing going, it's a weird connector they've got there. Let's take a look at it here. Uh, the big question is whether the cable will work with Windows 10. Okay, it's got the little uh, mini CD, hopefully with some software on it. And you see the, the connections here on this are really kind of interesting. They go into those those particular pins and we'll figure that out when we do the review and this says radiotity on this side although the uh, <laughs> the second uh, D isn't red so we'll find out if this works with Windows 10 and if it it doesn't if there's a workaround alright now that is that radio it was also given this particular radio to test it with because if you're going to talk on digital radio you've got to have someone else having a digital radio so this is the Baofeng DM5R okay here's the manual um, it appears to be in English and there are parts that are in color where it shows how to uh, set parameters uh, it's using Windows type uh, windows in here and we'll see how well this work works with Windows 10 now you know some people say well use some other uh, operating system but Windows 10 is what people are using these days if you get a new laptop or something that's what you're going to get nicely packaged in plastic here uh, this is the front of the radio now the front of the radio doesn't look any different from their normal uh, radios. It has the AB for the uh, top bottom there. It's got the band, very easily switched between the bands, and it actually says VFO and memory uh, right there so you can switch between those two modes. That's that's very nice. Okay, and it's got the single push to talk. It's got a button underneath it that says money and a button up here that says call. And um, then it programs through uh, this cable which looks just like the cable uh, for use uh, with the analog only version of the radio okay and it says it wants uh, it's a 5 watt radio uh, voltage 7.4 now this says it's two band 136 174 400 480 is two band right there 
this particular radio is designed to be sold in Europe. They sent me the European radio um, because that's what they had available. It does have the FCC logo right there and the common European logo. Okay, let's see how this radio attaches. This looks a lot like a standard Belfang. And you push this at the top to pull that out. Okay, so that's how that's done. Uh, the manual for this radio makes it clear you need to charge the battery for about four hours before you use it. Okay, now, this is a little bit of a departure for um, Belfang. It's this cardboard instead of that plastic. Uh, this from Sane Sonic, which is the, this is uh, designed to uh, plug in to a US outlet and give 110 to the European style uh, plugs. Again, because this particular radio was destined for Europe. Uh, the power supplies on these things have very broad input voltage. So let's see what we've got down here. We've got this lithium-ion battery charger and this like the other Baofengs wants 10 volts note that the connector is very normal connector don't put a 12 volt connector into this 10 volt thing here you can cook the batteries this one has a little uh, headset we'll test that out too and the uh, belt clip and here is the little charger. Uh, note on the charger that it says the input can be anywhere between 100 and 240 volts, which covers essentially the entire Earth. Okay, 50 or 60 hertz, which are the two common frequencies around the world. The output is 10 volts. Okay, and it shows how that's connected there. It's got the common European on it because this again was designed to be. Uh, uh, sold in Europe. Here is the uh, little handy belt or a handy little loop. This is the antenna and again let's look under here see if it says anything. Okay a little hard to see. Um, 136 to 174 520 megahertz oh, there we go we gotta get this just right in the light 400 to 520 so this is definitely a two band antenna here Anything else in the box? Nope, that's it. Okay, um, the next step is to go into a test of these. So there you have it, the unboxing of the Fang and the unboxing of the Radiotity. And these will be the ones that we'll look at uh, one at a time in the next few videos. I also want to explore the difference between DMR, System Fusion, um, D-Star, all of those things like that. Um, there isn't a standard for digital radio which makes for a problem and the DMR radios have a whole set of extraneous capabilities on it to connect to each other that are very different from uh, the way we're used to doing business with analog FM. So try to get into those. Um, there are some overlays at the end of this video uh, one of them uh, you can click on it says tip jar to go to a tip jar another one has a picture of my face with the word subscribe across my forehead you can click on that you subscribe and uh, then there's uh, also one uh, up there that is the playlist for the ke 0 OG quickies uh, so you can look at them all quickly all uh, all by themselves until next time, this is Dave Kassler, KE0OG73.